How is everyone tonight? So, for those of you who know or don't know, tonight is uh, our Art of the Otaku Night. Previously, it has been just uh, Anime Art Day, but so many people expressed interest in, um, in fanfic writing and the um, getting into character while in cosplay. Cosplay! So, yes, cosplay! Woo! Woo! So, we've expanded this month to Art of the Otaku Night. So, we have three guests tonight. Each one is going to take on a different aspect that I already mentioned. Stop that. What? Not you, the... Oh, I thought you meant I was like, I didn't do anything. It's, it's all your fault. Not you, the, the, the speaker. Um, so, and also tonight, for those of you who like to draw, or who, those of you who don't, whichever, um, we are having a contest to see, uh, who can draw the most awesome Munchie, which, if you don't know who Munchie is, he is our little mascot, which is displayed on anyone who's wearing an animatic shirt. Way ahead of you, dude. Oh, see? You came prepared. Well done. So, we have paper and pen for anyone who wants to enter. Um, it is due shortly before the end of this meet, which is at 9. Um, also, everyone, guess what next month is for animatics? March! Yes! Oh, Very good! Give that person a cookie! Oh, we like mine, we love mine. Yeah, we have cookies, seriously. Yeah. Oh, um, dude, cookie! <laughs> so, I don't know how many of you remember this, because I see a bunch of new faces, but next month is our Whose Anime Is It Anyways competition. For those of you who don't know what it is, if you've seen Whose Anime, it's just, er, who's anime? <laughs> Thank you. Good job, Eric. There we go. Yeah, you did. Any of them, whoever has seen whose line is it? Yeah. Anyone? Whose yeah. line? Woo! Woo! There's not a lot of people. Holy crap, there's a lot of people. Apparently. Well, it's it's an ad lib performance, basically, based on different situations. By a mystical way, it's not. Almost worked. Almost worked. Come on, people. Well, you've also got the gamers over there that are awesome themselves. Um, but yes, next month is our um, Whose Anime Is It Anyways? It's ad-lib performances based on given situations. Um, anyone can participate if they want to. If you don't, all you have to do is come and enjoy the show. It was pretty freaking hysterical last time. Well, yes, it was. last time we did it. We've also done it some other times, it but it's always last proved to be interesting. Yeah. Um, Especially last year. Yeah. Um, let's see. Do we have our winner from last month? Or last month? Last year. It was you. No, I was second. I was. I was. I was oh, that's right. You did win. You were second. <laughs> I was there. This is true. He won last year. He was second. That's right. Yeah. I think I was fourth. And now he took over my job as host. So you know that's how it is. Oh, yeah, Hosting it. Oh. Yes, you're now hosting. <laughs> So, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it, turn it over to our first guest, who is going to cover fan fiction, writing, whatnot. Everyone, uh, please welcome Axel. And please give each of our guests your undivided attention. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so I can talk about the art of fan fiction writing. 
which I will admit that I do more role playing than fan fiction writing as of late, but springboarding off of that, I think that role playing is a good basis for writing fan fiction. Yeah. Yeah. What? Good. Um, okay, so let's start off with a question. Who has ever role played or written fan fiction? Yo! <laughs> <laughs> Raise them high, people! <laughs> Woo! Yes. Okay. I'm too happy right now, so. Love role playing to me. Like, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm usually fairly picky about like details, like height and stuff, but I looked up the heights of the people and they're fucking short. Yeah. They're like five foot ten is the tallest guy, and I'm like, oh I'm taller than that. So is it is altering their heights okay to make them Americanized height? I don't argue that don't really mess with heights really. I usually I usually just refer to them as either like tall or short. I never I'm right. never really like he was five foot ten and 150 pounds as skinny as a bean pole. But hey, five foot ten is tall. I don't think that heights are really that important. They're not like okay. I can't say they're not important because they are important. Because if you're trying to do like a kissing scene, you know, someone's like four foot nothing and someone's six feet, you can't just be like and then they met and kissed because you'd be kissing a belly button. Can't hear you. Who can't hear me? Me. You? I'm, yeah. I'm not yelling loud enough, I'm sorry. No, people. <laughs> oh. Well, um, did you hear what I said? Yes. Okay. I'll just keep talking really loud so everybody way back outside can hear me. There you go. Come back. Okay, that's what else. Okay, so, God, I got really off topic on the AU of what I was actually originally going to say, which is if you're writing canon fan fiction, read the canon or watch the canon as much as you can and get it down pat. Like, take notes when you're watching. If you really, you really want to write amazing fan fiction and you're writing it within the canon with the canon characters and you're not, like, throwing in your original characters stuff and you're not so throwing... I'm not... I'm Mary Sue in. Um, I was going to say something else, but that's what I didn't Make sure that you've got the cat canon down pat because if you advertise your fan fiction as, oh, well, this is canonical, and then you have something that's just, like glaringly not canon, and they're gonna be like, "Girl, please!" When they read it. Um, let's see. I think another important thing when you're writing fan fiction is to read fan fiction. And what? Nothing. Hi, darling. Hi. Um, is to read fan fiction, and a lot of people. I found when I was looking up, like, on, on Google, they were like, don't read fan fiction because it just skews your perception of can't blah de blah you get fat blah I'm like, no, not really. Because when you read fan fiction of something that you want to write fan fiction for, and you find good fan fiction with good reviews, it'll tell you, it'll be like, reading the reviews and reading the fan fiction when it's good will... Sorry, I keep hearing you and I'm like, what? I get really distracted easily. Um, we'll give you tips as to what like you can do and what people like, depending on where you're posting it. But you should also read bad, bad fan fiction so you know what not to do. And I think that everybody should read My Immortal at least once because it's hilarious. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it's really funny. I don't know if you've ever read it, but it's hilarious. Um, let's see. <laughs> Another thing I found when I was looking online is someone was like, don't use similes and metaphors in your fanfiction. I was like, girl, please, what? But their examples were like, really weird similes. Like, she was like, oh god, I can't even think of what they were now. Yeah, she was like, what? What? Something really... If you, I think if you use a really dumb simile, a corn cob, it's a corn cannon, cob cannon loaded to the brim with missile silo, si missile something. <laughs> See, that is an example of a bad simile. But if you like, oh God, that's I think her eyes were like fire. I would use that simile. I'm like, sure, I like that. Or, yeah, that's a simile, not a metaphor. Yeah, look at me being all grammatically correct. Um, Sure. So I think that, and another, on that same point, Eric, you keep like freaking me out, man. His eyes do glow. Is description. And I know a lot of people, like, oh my god, I was, I was told in my sophomore, or in my freshman English class, don't use too much description when you're writing fiction stories. And I'm like, what's what? wrong with description, Girl, honey? Please. No. No, no, I will use as much description as I please. Yeah. Okay, wait, you and then I just have to. Okay, on that point. Okay, you and then you. I'm sorry. Um, I actually had a great tip given to me through a review once. It was uh, when you're writing fan fiction, write it as if people don't know who the characters are. Yeah. And it actually makes the story better most of the time. Of course, don't take like seven pages for a description. Oh well, yeah, don't like, pull a Stephanie Myers for thirty pages describing someone's like face. Or like every Spider-Man comic starts with his origin story. They're three pages.
plays the head. But a lot of people will just kind of jump right in because they assume anybody reading it knows the characters. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes they don't. Like sometimes, sometimes they don't. Yeah. Sometimes they're new and they're like, I kind of vaguely remember this, but why? Anyway, you Yes. Uh, yes. Probably whenever I'm writing fan fiction or anything, I will read through it and go, oh dear God, I have like seven cliches in here. How do you stop yourself from going into cliche land? Cliche land is a very dangerous place to tread. Um, like, okay, I guess I should ask what, like, what kind of cliches? Normally I found like cliches, like, more than once I've got to do more than the exact plot of two hundred things. Um, okay, the jockey. No, um, <clears throat> if you're going like plot-wise cliches, yeah. it is I'm impossible <laughs> in my personal view. Let me, let me just exaggerate that, but this is just my own personal view. I think it's impossible to write a completely original plot that when you tear it down to its skeleton, does not at least somewhat resemble something. That happens with characters I write too, because I'll always have like one white knight. Like, yeah, well see, that's really? good. No, that's, that's an archetype. Oh, okay. A white knight, a uh, damsel in distress, a uh, hero's journey, a vi uh, gosh, a misunderstood villain. Those are all archetypes, and those are okay. good things to have. So I'm not that's what part. George Lucas based like all the Star Wars off of, were archetypes, okay, because so he was trying. this big lit guy. Oh, wars. No, sorry. You're saying Lucas, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm banging my head in the wall now. Sorry. I like how just a good way to avoid them for future. A good way to avoid like plot cliches is when you, if you realize that it, it really like to the T matches the plot of something else. Uh huh. Um, kill somebody off that you don't really care about, or just if you can visualize where it's gonna go in relation to the plot that it resembles, change it. Okay. Just be like, oh, well, they, like, if, for example, um, oh, this is resembling Pretty in Pink too much, which I haven't seen in a while. Instead of yeah, I just use that one up, because in a few of my stories I will have love triangles where Ducky actually ends up winning. <laughs> yeah, well, see, that's kind of that's not a cliche because he ends up winning. Oh. Um, or you can have you can bring another character into it and be like, oh, well, then they fell madly in love with this other person in the end. Woo, Ducky never tell. Yeah, or something like that. Uh, cliches are. Sometimes hard to avoid. Okay. Um, or you can always just write up like six ideas and then roll a uh, no such, Yeah. No you could just if you if you have. There's no such thing. If you know you're going to the cliche, um, write up six ideas for an ending, oh. and then roll a d6 and choose it, and then go with that. And if you don't like it, then go back and rewrite it. Yeah, because. Now I think what I'm doing now is just going with archetypes because with one of the more I love recent types, the oh. ones I'm right, I'm like, oh dear lord, I have the self-loathing, self-loathing hero, and I'm like, oh, never mind, I can keep him. I can keep that when he meets the love of his life. He's about to toss himself off the building. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Okay. Um, another thing I want to talk about is consistency in fan fiction. Because I've read a few fanfics where they either have like a glaring plot hole and I'm like, how did you, what, how do you get from point A to point B here because Magic. there's something missing in the middle. <laughs> or there's this huge consistency error. I had one in a Batman fanfiction I wrote once <laughs> that I was like, how did nobody catch this? And it would take too much time to explain, but it was bad. It was like a page and a half of bad and I had to take the entire thing out and rewrite it and I was like, how did you not catch this people who read my fanfiction? <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of glad they didn't, but, um, so when you write, before you post, make sure you go back through and you're like, you check for consistency, you make sure that you didn't kill somebody off and they came back in the next chapter unless you wanted that to happen. Um, make sure you don't ha have, make sure you don't have things like, Vexen's eyes followed Vexen out of the room, because then you're just like, what? <laughs> His eyes are behind him on a stick, and that happened in a roleplay once. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it, it is a great totally idea weird. to reread your own work. Reread, edit, reread again, just to make sure you've got everything right. Uh, la, 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 la. I thought I didn't know what this is. Oh, um, I think it's important to write concisely. Like, don't necessarily, don't put unnecessary words in there. Like, don't use 17 ad adjectives to describe one person in the same sentence that's now a paragraph and a half long. That gets real. Don't be, don't be Hemingway. Don't, don't be Hemingway. Hemingway. Oh, yeah. Don't be Steinbeck either. What's wrong with Hemingway? 
Yeah, yeah. Not the yeah. I just like the I just like Be wary of adverbs. And then it got yelled at again. I kind of abuse adverbs sometimes, but be wary. It's okay. I just like I neglect pronouns. Oh, I just I have this love hate relationship with adverbs. It's like I want to use them. And then I use them, but when I take them out, it sounds so much better. I'm just like, but I want him to say it slowly. But it's so much, it sounds so much better with the other context when I just put he said. Uh, so um, that's kind of a here and there thing, just a personal endeavor, I guess. Okay. What else? Dictionary.com should be your best friend. <laughs> uh, and if you don't have dictionary.com, then a dictionary should be your best friend. <laughs> Because if you don't know how to use a word, if you like know a word but you don't really know the word and you're just like, I'm gonna throw it in here anyway without looking up the definition. <laughs> and then you get someone like me who's really nitpicky reading your fanfiction and they leave a review and they're like, uh, girl, please, that you did not use that word right. Like, I don't know, using. Yeah. Or, like, you want to sound really awesome and use a long word and then you use it incorrectly and then you just look like an asshole. Super um, fluid. So, if you if you kind of know a word and you're like, I want to use that because I think it'll sound really good here, but I'm not quite sure, just look it up. You'll save so much hard if you just look it up. And if you have a word that you want to use and you're like, well, I don't want to just use nice. I want a better word for nice. Thesaurus.com, best friend. That I have that tab as like a quick, I just click and it takes me there. It's lovely. Um... Let me look at my notes again. Show, don't tell. That's something I got told a lot when I was writing. Yeah, that happens to me when I'm acting. Show and use dialogue. A lot. Uh, unless, unless obviously you're like opening a scene and you're like, and then the tree said to one another, don't do that obviously, but um, between your characters, make sure you have a lot of dialogue because dialogue really tells the story. I mean, yeah, description is good and all that in-between stuff is good, but if you have characters interacting, it's usually through dialogue. I don't know why I keep staring at you. I'm sorry. I hope I'm not making you feel uncomfortable. Um, but if you're just telling your story, gosh, if you're just like, he was sad. He was sad. Well, if you're really just and then if you're me reading, you're gonna be like, whatever. I have no feelings for him. But if you're like, he sat down, shoulders slumped, head dropped between, I don't know, dropped his chin to his chin. I can't even. Like, I can't speak fan fiction. Sorry. Um, eyes closed in a gloomy dark room with one tear silently down his cheek. And then you're like, wow, that is a sad, sad fellow. And it's cliche. That's a sad, strange little person. I think there's a fine line between what's cliche and what's not. Um, I like, I actually like using cliches every once in a while, just for shits and giggles. Because they work. People know yeah. what they are. And this is true. They do know what they are. When what is even? What even is that? I don't know what that says. I can't read <laughs> <laughs> um, the last thing I want to mention, since he says I'm running low and I have nothing else on my notes yet anyway, is to take time to write, write. Don't just be like, oh I have this great idea, and type it up in like 15 seconds, and then post it. Yeah, um, I got that once and I was six and it came out. like, what is this? Yeah, what even is this thing? <laughs> Yeah, those are okay. Here's what, you, right. here's what you do. If you have a great idea that just slams into the back of your head like a freight train, make a plot buddy. That is like the best thing you can do with an idea that just smacks you in the face is to make a plot buddy. Just type up a really quick plot like, okay, these are the characters I want to use. This is where I want the story to go. Uh, this is a conflict I want to happen. And then save it in your Word document and come back to it later when you have more time to actually flesh it out and make it good. Because, I, God, I don't want to sound like a horrible person, but I hate reading bad fan fiction. <laughs> I hate reading fan fiction that people just, like, type up for the NC-17 aspect, and they just destroy the characterization, and then, it, like, I'm just like, I can't even, oh! And it just makes me throw my laptop across the room, I'm like, fuck, ah, Um, yeah. Any
questions? Any more questions? <laughs> yes. Child. Okay, no, I remember whenever I write fan fiction, it ends up being like five pages, and that's my whole story. How can I kind of flesh it out and make it look respectable? Description. Description. Um, depending on what your plot is, try to think of ways that you can add, maybe like, if you have like an overarching plot, like, oh, well, they need to catch a bad guy, for example. That's your main conflict. Uh, try to add some subplots, like on their journey to catch the bad guy, they have to help a village that's on fire, or they meet up with this this cool Morphe guy who actually turns out to be evil in the end, or um, yes, and little subplots like that. Okay, because this is what I'm writing right now, I'm totally dependent on subplots. Yeah, but make sure you have like, uh, make sure they're don't, valid. And don't point. make it just subplots, I would suggest. Kind of have like an overarching plot. I have like one or two. Yeah, and then kind of like like most detective shows, there's, there's always like an overarching plot, and then there's all the side stories that each episode comprises. Mm -hmm. Uh, kind of like Castle, Becca's trying to find the, her mother's killer, and oh, Castle's helping, and then they have all these subcases that they do in between this happening, and sometimes it ties in, and sometimes it doesn't. I need to get reminded myself to get on Hulu and watch the, <laughs> yeah, and watch the Blue Butterfly. Yeah, I'm not caught over, up, so. Blue Butterfly. Any <laughs> other questions? <laughs> There's something you should always do is stay in the correct perspective. Oh yeah, I didn't cover perspective or point of view. <laughs> if you're writing in third person, stay in third person. Don't switch to first. If you're writing you know in first, though? stay in first. Second person. I write in second person. Girl, please. Yes. But it's okay if, like, you have a flashback or something? Or the person who is speaking changes. Like, but you have to make clear distinctions of when the person, the the main character. So, like, say you're talking from a girl's perspective, yeah, and then you make a clear distinction, and it's the guy's perspective oh, that's, next. Yeah, that's that's like writing in third person on this, where you know what right. everybody's thinking. Right. Instead of writing, for example, in third person limited, where you're stuck in the perspective of one person, and you can only see into their mind, and so you're only seeing all the other characters from the perspective of that person. And so it's an incredibly biased fan fiction either way. Um, first person is usually fun, depending on who you are. <laughs> Second person's hard for me, I can't do it. Yes. I'm sorry I'm asking a lot of questions, but with some, I'll, I will do what I think is third person limited, but the perspective will change from character to character, depending on whether or not it's their turn to shut and have spotlight. Well, then that's not really third person uh, limited. That's, it's, it's like multi-third person limited almost, but it's still kind of third person omniscient because you are getting into the mind of more than one character, and I think uh -huh. third person limited is usually just you're in the mind of one character. Yeah, How long have you had your hand up, lovely? Okay, I thought I had been ignoring you the entire time. Yes. What? Curly fries. So good. They're good. Cannon and head cannon. I would say that canon is what you see, like, on the page or on the show, and then headcanon is what you kind of fill in um, off-screen or off-page. Like, if you have two characters that you ship, and they're kind of like a domestic couple, then your headcanon for them, if you never actually see this happen, your headcanon could be, oh, well, I think that this person gets up really early and makes coffee for both of them and then wakes their whatever husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend up with a cup of coffee each morning. And though you don't actually see that on the page or on screen, it, it fits with the characterization of the, the people, and that's kind of your headcanon. <laughs> I love headcanon. I abuse it like a I do person. too. That's what got me through Bob and Am I done? Well, I, I guess I'm done if there's no more questions. No, I want the stage. <laughs>